it. RPC contract. Anything else that we need to have? Okay, Jeremy. Uh, I just wanted to ask Zach uh, to make sure that you're all set to take minutes and that all good to go. Okay. All set. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Zach. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy and Zach. All right. Anything else? Any other changes or additions to the agenda? Okay. Hearing none. Any public comment? Any items that you'd like to speak about that are not on the agenda? Okay. <clears throat> Hearing none. Moving along to the consent agenda, um, I move that we approve the consent agenda, which consists of the approval of the March 9th minutes as previously distributed. Second. Okay, seconded by Siobhan. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion, uh, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions or roll call requests? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, poll inventory work. Who's going to lead this one, David or Ray? Ray. Go for it, Ray. Hey, thank you. Um, Jeremy, since we're going to be talking uh, contract negotiations and contractor matters, uh, can you deal with the executive session, please? Um, sure. Uh, so I have a quick, I have a quick question about this. Um, have the contracts been distributed to? Uh, all, the whole board so that we've seen these in advance? Um, there are no, we're not talking about actually um, um, awarding the contracts. We're talking about the process and you, you may have seen the motion that I had uh, in, the, in the email that went out. Okay, I don't, I get a lot of emails, Ray, as you might imagine. So if you maybe could post that motion just in advance, because if we're not talking, I mean, I understand if we're talking about contract negotiations, then we can go into executive session. But if we're talking about process, I'm not sure that, that that's suitable. Jeremy? Um, so what we, wanna, what we wanna talk about is which contractors, which specific contractors we're recommending that the board pursue negotiations with. Um, and I guess the feeling that we had was that that shouldn't be public because you know we're not in contracts with them yet um the other question that i had was are we going to be able to get orca back in if we go into executive session now uh well someone will have to send zach a message or something when we are done so that we can circle around and come back in so my my question well, is well there's cvrpc but then there's also orca Oh yeah, that's true. Um, probably not, honestly. Okay. So this is why we typically do these at the end. Uh, are there any other items that are going to be that folks are going to expect <laughs> to have executive session? No, just the just the poll inventory stuff. Do you want to uh, do you want to move this to the end um, and just? Uh, I, I'm expecting that my uh, select board might be 710 to 720, 715 to 730, somewhere in there. It looks like you're planning on going until 8 o'clock. Perhaps we could postpone that this until then. I, I think that, that would probably work smoother okay. just in terms of the flow of the meeting. Well, why don't we do that then? Okay, I will put that at the end then. <clears throat> um, the project manager search extension. You could also do that at the end if you'd like. Um, I mean, if that doesn't require an executive session, let's let's knock it out right now. Okay. So, uh, the short the short of all of that is that uh, you may recall that we did advertise or, or we did uh, issue an RFP for the project manager position on 22 February until 15 March. We received one proposal. Um, we did do some front porch forum uh, pr uh, promotion. Uh, however, we didn't do any more promotion than that, I think, just about. And so that uh, having only received one uh, proposal, uh, and that, that proposal being valid for 180 days, I think it's appropriate for us to reopen the uh, reopen the, uh, uh, negotiations, or reopen the position. And so um, there was a motion 
Um, and I'll stick that into the chat room here. Okay, <clears throat> Ray, just for the, for the benefit of the folks who might be watching this or listening to this later who don't have the video, would you actually read your motion, please? Sure. Uh, the board uh, moves that the board reopen the search for a project manager and advertise position in accordance with the board's decision on January 26th to approve up to, up to $2,500 for that purpose. Second. Okay, seconded by Siobhan. Thank you. Any further discussion on Ray's motion to extend this? Chuck? Um, since the money was earmarked in January and, and a little bit of time has passed, I just want to check in with uh, someone from the finance committee or, or maybe Jerry specifically that we are still in good shape to spend this money accordingly. I suspect so, but wanted to, to do the due diligence there. Yes, we are. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions or roll call requests? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Good to go. Anything else on this, Ray? Uh, no, nothing further. I'm expecting the executive committee to take it up. We'll work okay. out the details on Thursday night. Perfect. All right, uh, Planning and Development Committee report back, David. So we've been pretty busy, and I would say you know, between the poll inventory and negotiating with the WEC MOU, um, and I'll give an update and since that's not on the agenda, but it's been something we've spent a bunch of time on. As you recall, at the last board meeting, we approved hiring Krista, yeah, last name is escaping me at the moment, shoot. shoot, to help us with this, and she's been fantastic. So we, um, have had two sessions and WEC has now responded to our concerns or our version of the, the MOU. And um, we have left the finalization with Krista and their lawyer, but we're pretty darn close to having an agreement uh, with them. There's a meeting tomorrow with the uh, with WEC and EC Fiber and Kingdom Fiber and, and NEK Broadband to try to keep things moving along. Um, the board, the intent of the WEC board is to approve an item next week to go ahead with borrowing 20, up to 23,000, 23 million from IUS. And they will, at pending that, they will build out the fiber network in the Washington Electric Co op district, a territory. And with the three CUDs participating along with Kingdom Fiber. And um, so that's been going pretty good, but it's been a lot of work. Um, and let's see what else. I've been working uh, with the committee on drafting the scope of statement of work for design, engineering, construction, and operations. We're realizing that if we don't keep everything moving at the same time, we're never going to get things done. So hence, for those who remember from way back, uh, I created a um, project spreadsheet Gantt chart for all of the activities that CUD has going on. I've now updated that and I'll send that link in the Google Drive to everyone and you will see how crazy it is. I've now created separate, spread, separate tabs for planning and development, communications, executive committee, um, and then meetings. I created a tab for all the meetings that we have, uh, at least the regularly scheduled meetings. Um, the dates in this spreadsheet are not quite perfect. So for those people who are in charge of any of these items, I'd appreciate it if you had, you, you had, I mean, I am always an optimist in terms of how quickly things can get done. I need to be tamed down on that. Um, but for the most part, we're on a path to, we're gonna be, this is gonna be a busy year. and. Um, Planning and development is up for the task. And um, so I think that's the, um, besides the poll thing that's going on and the, um, the work negotiations and moving forward with that. We've also been following, and I think Jeremy has on the agenda, he's got the federal funding on there. The state funding, we did 
We did receive, and Jeremy signed today, the um, grant ex amendment. This allows us to do the more amended Moortown project. So that's a go. And then the, the Northfield Roxbury project with EC Fiber Valley Net. Um, they are, we are developing an MOU with them for them to build that out by the end of the year. Now, whether they can make that end of the year is questionable, but we're working on doing that. So this, um, oh, the other news that has maybe a little bit to do with it. There's another, um, um, the East, well, Washington Electric has negotiated a deal with Velco to run a fiber line from the East Montpelier substation to the Maple Corner substation on distribution lines. So we will be able to use that fiber with pending some engineering and design work to connect to connect over 100 properties on that on that particular route. Um, this still needs some some work worked out on terms of what are the arrangements between CV Fiber, WEC, and Delco, or is it just going to be CV Fiber and WEC? Um, but that's another ongoing <clears throat> project. David, and, can I ask a question? Sure. Will the, will that effort be consistent um, with the MOU with WEC? In other words, is that kind of a a test? Yeah, that's Ken. That's a good question. And the detail of who pays what for what on that line is an, is on 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 her of un, unresolved at the moment. But it may be just part of the WEC network that we are participating in. Um, but it's something that that. Um, Velco has agreed to construct this year, so it'll be um, built this year. Um, the other thing that I haven't told the Planning and Development Committee today, I went through all the poles on all our routes to determine how many poles were in Green Mountain territory that might be able to take advantage of Green Mountain Power's um, offer of a $2,000 credit on any pole make ready, and is we are not 1,800. That's a lot of money. Um, whether we can uh, execute any of that in the time frame that GMP has proposed, for those who didn't know, GMP and Wash and Vermont Electric Co-op agreed in order to get broadband going to the unserved populations of Vermont, decided that they would help out by uh, giving a two thousand dollar credit for Make Ready on any poll that needs it for any location under four slash one speed. Um, so it's it's um, let's say I mean basically it's still a lot of work um, for all of us to get this moving, but there's a lot of moving pieces, and then the legislature keeps on, you know, whether the the Senate and the House can come to terms on the broadband bill that they before them. Did, Jeremy, do you have that on the agenda? No. Um, um, anyway, the House I was, I was expecting is about to pass a bill. That would provide 1.2 million immediately for uh, engineering design make ready, and the Senate bill is 1.7 million. So they have to come to terms on that. But besides that, the two bills are so different in terms of approach. One wants to create a broadband authority, and the other one wants to create, recreate, readopt the Vermont Telecommunications Authority, which deals with not only broadband but deals with cell service. So there's a lot going on in the legislature that'll affect us. And then you add that and Jeremy has the thing on the funding later, but it's it's a crazy time. It's an exciting time. Um, there's a lot of money coming down the pike um, and we are wanna be in a position to have make, be ready to use it. So anyway, that's my report from the committee. I'll take any questions. Yeah, any questions for David? Go ahead, Alan. David, is is the work plan going to reflect work that is being done by entities other than CV Fiber, but with whom we're collaborating or cooperating? When you say that, you mean WEC? Well, yeah, WEC, but also EC Fiber, uh, presumably. Yeah, um, so the, I, the current, I'm just going to guess the there are going to be more and more of these kinds of relationships, and I'm I'm wondering how we're going to just keep track of who's doing what and what our role is and all that kind of stuff. That, that, Alan, that's a, a great question and I should have answered it. So the, the current, we don't know the exact answer to the question, but we do know that 
it'd be silly for us to do our engineering and design in the absence of working with the engineering and design for Washington Electric. So the notion is that we will do that tandem if possible to make sure that the 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 design anyway is is consistent for the kind of network that needs to be built for both us and for Washington Electric and its partners. So it's uh, yeah, Alan, you've got hit the nail right on the head. Okay, uh, so you're on top of it. Well, trying to be as <laughs> as best we can. You know it's there. You're on top of it. Any other questions for David? All right, thanks, David. I expect we're going to come back to some of this stuff in, in a little bit, also. Um, communications committee, Chuck. Hi. Uh, okay, so a couple of updates from the last communications committee meeting. Um, we approved posting the call to volunteers uh, that Ray drafted. Thank you, Ray, for doing that. Uh, it is now up on the website. Um, we have been holding off on posting a community update because we were waiting for a couple of details to get finalized. However, uh, those details, I got the, the final go ahead from David today. And, and so the communications committee had already pre-approved uh, an update to go out as soon as that trigger happened. Uh, and so now I will be disseminating an update both on the website as well as to the rest of you on the board uh, to modify and share out to your communities as you see fit. Um, as usual, just an ask that if you do uh, decide to modify it extensively, you just share it back with the communications committee so that we can kind of keep tabs on, on what messaging is going out there and, and understand in case questions come through on the website and, and things like that. Um, the final detail just to update the group on is uh, I checked in with our website developer um, and she indicated that she is intending to continue to support us through the end of this calendar year based on the retainer we gave her at the end of last calendar year. Um, now that the amount that we paid her in that retainer won't get us extensive changes, but when it comes to tweaks here and there, uh, she is willing to continue to support that. So um, just wanted to throw that out there that we do have some support and coverage on an ongoing basis in that capacity. Uh, and that is it, any questions? I, I have a question, and I hope it's um, I hope it's appropriate. And that, so I, I'm in Montpelier, and I'm told that in the end of April, I'm myself and five thousand other households in Montpelier, East Montpelier, Middlesex are going to get a communication from Consolidated saying, "Do we want to sign up for fiber?" And I know that being a Comcast customer, my decision is going to be different than when we go out to our CV fiber customers and ask if they want to be hooked to fiber, but still, in part because I'm not sure what other role Montpelier has in CV fiber, but I don't know how to make the decision. And if we can work together to develop the communication materials to help people understand what it's like to be hooked to fiber and use, I'll say Montpelier as a kind of a test ground, but also kind of a, I'll say it's a responsibility because we're a CV fiber town. If CV fiber can communicate to my Montpelier residents something about this decision, it'll help with credibility, it'll help with us as an organization, but it'll also be this sort of practice in communication on helping people understand what the decision is. So I, I know that's not a trivial ask, but I think it's really important. And um, so I throw it out there for consideration. Um, Ken, thank you. And I'd like to point out that Moortown, uh, the northeast portion of Moortown that is right adjacent to Montpelier, uh, has already received communications from Consolidated to the effects of, of, of that. Uh, so it is definitely top of mind uh, for me. And I will bring that back to the committee uh, to address on the sooner side so that we can, we can figure out how to respond. Thank you. So <clears throat> there was also some some timing issues then on um, that we I think we need to consider as well as we're doing um, as we're looking at you know where we're going to be thinking about building um, our projects and such like that. So uh, Berlin, my address was in that map, um, and I um, have an unreasonably good authority that they're not going to get to me before fall of next year. 
So I don't know that Mortartown is necessarily <laughs> uh, top of the top of the priority list for them. I think I think Montpelier definitely is. There is fiber outside my there is fiber outside my house right now. There you go, uh, David, Michael, then back to Chuck. So I put out the inquiry about how many people on the board got postcards. I got very few, and that tells me that our um, well anyway. Pretty clear. The majority of these consolidated build to date is on any line that has Comcast cable. And if you go out any road in Middlesex or you go to any road in East Montpelier that has cable, you will see that Eustace has put up fiber. But anywhere else where there's no cable, it seems to be missing. So if you didn't get a postcard, I don't think you're on the list. But also, it goes to credit Fred's design for the six routes. He chose almost all routes that were non-cabled. So I think we're good for the short term. And then we'll have to decide how fast we want to try to beat Consolidated at their game or even overtake Consolidated. Um, I think with the funding that's coming down the line, we may be able to be cost competitive with them. Um, but we'll soon find we'll find that out as we go forward. But I'm pretty excited. All right, thanks, David. Michael, then Chuck. Well, I don't have a comment or question. Um, I, based on what uh, Consolidated Skip Boston said in the legislature and a couple of other places, it sounds like that whole Montpelier exchange is not going to be covered. I, mean, I think he said something like 1,600 locations, and there's five or 6,000 locations in that in that wire center, in that map. So they may, you know, he doesn't have to tell us everything they're gonna do because that's part of the game, but it may be that they intend to cover everywhere a little at a time or all at once or never, it's not clear. And I'm, my question is, is anyone, other than David's comment of where he's seen cables so far, does anyone have any other intelligence? Do, do we think it's gonna be 1600 locations, like he said, or do we think it's gonna be more? Do we have, have, has anyone seen fiber where there is now Comcast in the Montpelier yeah. area? Gallison Hill Road in East Montpelier. Yep. Um, they seem, to be, but they seem I, to be making their way up towards Worcester along Route 12 as well. Yep. And isn't, that all isn't that all cabled? It's all cabled. And they're, they're actually, believe it or not, Quaker Road in East Montpelier Center, uh, which is all cabled. Yeah. So I, I have some uh, secondhand scuttlebutt that they were going to be building where I live, and there's not cable here. Yeah. But it was within the map. But that wasn't going to happen until next year. So whether how you know how true that was or not, I. I, I can't tell. This is Jerry. I'm also in the 223 exchange. And I went and filled out the application online to see what happens. And I got a, a, a robo response that basically said, we'll get back to you. So that, um, I'm definitely not on their short list. All right. Uh, Chuck, I think we're back to you. Yeah, and I just wanted to clarify that um, while I have heard from some folks in Moortown that did receive um, these sort of communications, uh, they do not live along the amended Moortown route we are talking about prioritizing, or we are prioritizing um, build out on. So there it does not overlap. Um, but what you know where exactly the boundaries are i don't know more town is a weird town that's very sort of geographically dispersed and we have a pocket over right next to montpelier but that is that you know that is not the actual route we're plotting all right fair enough alan two things that i remember from the consolidated testimony before the house energy and technology committee when was that back in january the first was that they said they really do have to go where the money is. I mean, they, that 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 was testimony from the consolidated person, and it makes sense. I mean, they do. I mean, they're a for-profit operation. The other thing they said under repeated questions from at least one of the members of the committee 
if they were going to go everywhere in a town, they said no. They they were very very straightforward about that. So I think I think what's going to happen is I think Consolidated probably is very anxious to know what kind of take rates they're going to get in what kind of areas. So this might be some sort of a testing ground for how their build out is going to work. And they might find that they can get a lot more customers than they planned, or they might find they can't get nearly as many. Um, but I, I'm, I'm sort of guessing Comcast doesn't really know exactly what it's gonna be doing a year from now either. Um, All right, thanks, Alan. Tom? I don't know if this is looking for a direct response or just general ponderance, but um, does it make more sense for us to, at some point, maybe not right away, but at some point broadcast where we plan to go um, because it informs those customers of what our intentions are compared to uh, not letting CCI know where we might go? Um, is there a, an algebra to be done there? I mean, per personally, I, I think we're going to end up doing that rather soon once we've, you know, settled on the route and some of the engineering. As soon as we do that, then I think that it'll be our obligation to reach out and advertise that. Is there a stage gate that makes sense that's a, on that? Or? That's a good question. David, is that at all in your um, in your Gantt chart, like when we pull the trigger on reaching out to potential customers and you're muted David you're muted <clears throat> the uh, the first indication of that has been we when we start doing the poll inventory we're gonna have to notify the people on that route that there may be people in their yard and so it's gonna happen really rather sooner than later on that the first phase um, I, I, I mean, it's my opinion, we should be letting people know that there are people tromping around in the neighborhood. And so that'll be the first thing. And I, I gave uh, Chuck a complete list of all our people's home, the name and their addresses from the state's property grant list. So we actually have the names of homeowners, we don't have the renters, by every address in our district. And so we could reach out by, you know, postcard mailing or whatever to get to everybody. And maybe that's the best, that's a quiet way of doing it um, without tipping a hat to too many people. Yeah, that's, that seems like the reasonable, like the reasonable thing to do. So we both advertise that there's going to be people, like you said, tromping around in their yard and that they should expect that because our interest is focused there, that it's, that they're likely to be able to sign up uh, rather soon. Yep. So, um, do we want to put, you know, postcards or potential customer communications in that pipeline of things to do? All right. I see a thumbs up from Chuck. I will take that as a take that as a yes. All right. Any other questions or commentary uh, for communications committee, Michael? Um, you've heard this from me before. I'm, I'm very cautious about how soon you um, advertise what we're going to do. Um, realize that um, Consolidated does not have to do any poll inventory, does not have to apply for any poll attachment licenses, does not have to do any make ready. They just overlash on their cables they already have. And if they want to respond to something, in an area that they were intending to go anyhow, we want to give them the least notice as possible, in my opinion. Are any of those polls that we're looking at consolidated only polls? No, but they're jointly owned. Oh, oh if they're no, WEC owned polls, no. if they're WEC owned polls, then Consolidated doesn't own them, but they're on there and they can still overlash on their cables. No, 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 but I, I understand. But if it was a consolidated owned poll, we would have to ask them for the poll attachment, whatever, and they, they, they would know that that's where we were going. That's true. Can I make a point there, Jeremy? Go for it. Yep, go ahead, Jerry. 
you know, regardless of them knowing where we're going to go, it doesn't change the fact that there's only 10 homes per mile with a 50% take rate. That's five, five premises per mile. They're not going to race us to provide on my road. They, 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 they're just not going to do it. it. It's it's not worth it to them. They'll let us have it. In this case, now there are other areas where it may not be. That may not be the case. But I, I I don't I don't I don't see the big competition from consolidated. They could have done a lot of things here a long time ago. Jeremy. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, yes, I agree that they're not going to be building out maybe necessarily to your house or to my house or people that live a little more out of the rooms. But they can make it really difficult for us by picking up the places that are, you know, six houses per mile and leaving the ones that are 10 you know uh, if they if they want to be a you know a pain in the neck my two cents anyway okay well i i, I think that we're our hand is going to be forced and we're in the just in the spirit of being good neighbors and communicating to the folks whose yards are going to be trodden upon that we are going to have to do that anyways. I don't know that there's really a way around it. Um, you know, we can hold off until we know, you know, a more firm date for when people will be physically present. And, but I, I'm not sure that we can delay any farther than that. And I know, Michael, we don't want to give them too much lead time, but at, at some point we have to, you know, we have to move our chess pieces. Sure. I'd say if it, it does end up going into a more public forum, either intentionally or just by what happens, um, if it goes beyond the, the postcards to individuals, um, we might want to come out with something public that doesn't specify where we're going, but that we are intending to go other locations relatively quickly as well, um, yeah. just so that we can manage those expectations. Yeah, so so maybe part of the bigger communication that goes out will you know will ha will have a mention that you'll see postcards and that we're ex you know expecting to be using mm -hmm. some of this federal and state money to move aggressively throughout our member towns, yep. and that you know as we're going into these places that the um, that we will be communicating with folks directly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be more effective for us, I think, to go the postcard route than try to you know advertise. Um, in a newspaper, even in front porch forum, I think the uh, the the very uh, personal, like high, high touch, you know, communication with the prospective customers and the residents of our member communities are. I think that's that's the way that we should go. Okay. Anything else for communications? Okay. Thanks, Chuck. Um, <clears throat> moving on to incoming federal and state funding and submitting comments. Um, I want to get what I think is the easier stuff out of the way first. Um, I sent out a letter um, that um, David and Ray had drafted. I edited a bit, um, and I actually got a couple edits, um, kind of just uh, grammatical and uh, clarity edits from RD. Um, I'd like to move that we that we approve my sending out of that letter to the Department of the Treasury. I'll second it. Okay, seconded by David Healy. Thanks, David. Any further discussion about that letter or what or the wisdom of sending out the commentary to Treasury about how the uh, how the federal funds should be coming to municipalities and states? Ray? I'm not sure you saw my my feedback, but um, one obviously I'm in favor of the letter. Second was um, make a suggestion that we do CCs to our delegation and to the appropriate state authorities so that we can put them on notice and perhaps they can help us during the rulemaking phase, or at least be sensitive to what it is we're we're trying to accomplish and perhaps they could do assistance. That yeah, definitely. Good. Okay. Good one. Yeah, so I'll definitely send it to um, um, Representative Welch, Senator Sanders, Senator Leahy, and uh, DPS. I'll probably send it directly to the commissioner. Yeah. The, the important bit there was to have the CC physically on the letter so the Treasury knows right. that Patrick Leahy is interested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
no, it 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 does carry weight. <laughs> Especially since he lives in our district and all, right? He's on our first route. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else uh, about the? Yeah, I, mean, I, had about that? I had a question on that topic. Um, so hold on. Um, on on the letter or on the topic? On the letter. Okay, go ahead. Um, and it's just a question. Um, is the intent of the letter to suggest that funds go directly to the CUD in lieu of member towns or in addition to member towns? The expect because there's some confusion in the way that the the federal law that the law was written it's not clear that CUDs would even be eligible to receive these funds um, so we wanted to make sure that in their rulemaking process that they didn't sort of miss that Vermont has this special structure and, and so when they go to do the drafting of those rules that it's um, that we are able to be a part of that because I think as it stands right now, if nothing, if the rules are sort of um, just crafted around the old way of doing things, you know, it's going to go to uh, counties and towns. And then the because we don't have general purpose, what do they call it, county government, whatever, it would essentially get sliced by population back down to the towns, which is kind of the, re the rest of, of the discussion in this item. So if I could follow up, so are you thinking it might be in lieu of county funding? Some, something like that. I mean, where it might go to, um, so so some of, some of the discussion has been, is, is this gonna go to an RPC instead of a, um, instead of a county? Because Washington County exists, but not in any sort of sense like counties in, in other states. Yeah. So, uh, RPCs, though, would fall under the HUD definition of of how, where these funds could go. The the purpose, and this came out of a discussion at Vicuda, um, that we need to make sure we sort of plant our flag in the soil and say, "Hey, we exist," and that we should be uh, CUDs should be considered to be legitimate recipients of these sorts of funds. How how it gets divvied up, whatever I, it's not. I don't think that's even completely uh, finalized or completely understood yet. Anything else on the letter? Okay, so let's go to uh, all those in favor. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions, roll call requests. Okay, motion passes unanimously. I will um, I will make the edits that RD suggested. I will add the uh, CC, Pat Leahy, et cetera, um, at the bottom and uh, send that out hopefully tomorrow. <clears throat> um, the, so like I was just saying, the incoming federal funding is, um, a lot of it is earmarked directly for towns. And I want to try to see if I can find the language. Um, David, you sent you sent something around that came through. I think that came through the RPC, didn't it? Right. Uh, I just wanted to find the language. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I gave you presenter rights because you can actually uh, um, you can actually do that. Can um, just wondering if I can find the discussion from was it from Bonnie it was from Bonnie so so can you can you not have that on the on the screen right now yeah, David? I'm trying to, oh, I've oh, got oh. Two, two screens up and it's screwing me up screwing me up I as see. Usual. let me see if I can get the right, right. screen so so I'm I'm gonna I'll just read what what Bonnie wrote and what the estimated um, the estimated amounts were so the American Recovery Act appears to include funding for local governments, the exact amount per town. It's kind of up in the air. Oh, here you go. There's the, the numbers in front of you. So how how the funds might be apportioned. Um, 
and it says the appears the funds may have a three-year lifespan that is at 2024 expiration currently the bill includes the following eligible uses and this could change i'm going to copy this into the chat because i'm just going to burn through this um to respond to the public health emergency with COVID-19 or included the house sold Jeremy for me at least you're breaking up to the point where I can't understand I don't know if other people are struggling yeah right totally course. broken up Pax. Yeah, we're losing you. Some private staff, small businesses and nonprofits, the industries such as people and hospitality. So this could be things like uh, rent us, rent us as tourists to rent us. let someone else do it. Not good. Okay. If you I don't think I don't me. think we got any of that, Jeremy. Okay. Sorry. We can hear you now. You can hear me now? Okay, so I'm tethered to my phone, so everything everything is sort of uh, uh, not great all the time. If you can hear me now, so yeah, so that first bullet um, could involve uh, direct payments to residents. So there is a, is a little bit of competition to, for this funds, you know, do you, does the individual town actually spend money on broadband infrastructure or does it spend it on um, rent assistance, things like that. Um, so the next one is for the provision of government services to the extent of the reduction in revenue of such state, whatever. So if they've lost funding from the state or to make necessary investments in water, sewer, broadband infrastructure. So I'm thinking like Montpelier would probably, um, probably be more likely to make investments in the first bullet, right? Direct you know, rent assistance or whatever, or updating water and sewer. So. But Jeremy, yeah. if I may, um, mm -hmm. the issue of rental assistance, the state has a huge amount of money and it's actually a bit of a challenge for them to spend their money on rental assistance. So I'm not sure that, that the municipalities will take that on as a responsibility there's a big chunk of money and i'll just restate big chunk of money that is, is intended for rental assistance at the state level okay so but but this money that's going directly to the municipalities if a municipality chose to do this they could i mean yeah it might be difficult but it's it's here i mean it's and i'm just imagining we are probably so. So my the punchline to this that I'm hoping to get to is that we should be uh, writing letters to select boards, and if that's you know me writing a letter to all of the select boards, that's totally reasonable and doable, um, and say, hey, if you want to allocate this money to broadband in your town, this is something that we can help with. You know, you know, help pitch into our larger um, our larger effort to build. 100% coverage, you know, with fiber everywhere, they may choose to take us up on that. I, I, I guess I just want to put it on the table that because the, another allowable use of this could be something like direct assistance to residents, um, we have to be aware that they may choose to do this instead. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, not sure how to proceed from here. Do we? Do we want to send emails to select board members? Do you want to, you know, each of the individual reps to call select boards and talk to them about this? Should should I send one global message? I can't so, see anybody's camera now, by the way. So oh, okay, so this is David, the town, the select board chair of Callis reached out to me the day the bill was passed. And she said, David, do you guys need broadband money? So, um, of course, I wrote back to her and I said, of course. <laughs> but I also know that the East Calus Water District is out of water. 
So I, I don't mind, I would love to get whatever money we can get from you. But I think writing a letter from the delegate from that town to their own select board saying, would love to have some of this money, we'll come to you and talk to you about what we're doing, if you haven't been doing that, and what you do with the money. So I think, you know, the message we need to provide to select boards is a little more than just say, we'd like some of your money. We should be able to tell them what we're thinking about doing with their money if they gave it to us. And so if it makes the town, you know, more connections and more pass-throughs or more whatever, we should probably think about doing that, but doing it soon. Um, so that's my two cents. So, so if somebody, well, somebody who has cameras on can call on people from here, that would be helpful. I think Ray had his hand up, right? Yeah. So, um, Jeremy, I, I saw an offer that you made in an email with regard to drafting a letter. And yep. uh, I would like to see that the, the fact that you were on the Berlin select board um, gives you a, a kind of sensitivity to the how to deal with this kind of deftly. And I think mm -hmm. that's an important thing. Uh, we don't want to lean on them. I think there's a, you know, they all have their needs. And we, need to, we need them to be thoughtful about um, using their money to, uh, to make things better in their own towns. On the, on the other hand, you're also able to give kind of the global um, picture of what we're trying to accomplish and how important this is for holding subscription fees down and how important it is to deliver this thing as quickly as possible. If, if we go individually, for example, to each town, um, there's going to be an expectation, well, when are you coming here? You know, it's like, uh, d deliver this, I'm expecting you next month, kind of a thing. So I, I mm -hmm. guess I'd like to see your drafting uh, first on that, and my view would be to come from the chair as opposed to ind individual delegates. Maybe we can sign on or do something else, but I'd like to see yours first. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm happy to do that, and I've I've started writing that. But those are good, um, good high points to hit. And I and I'm what I'm hoping for is uh, one of the other things I'm hoping for is for you to sort. If we're going to go the route of me sending this out directly, for you to essentially pre-approve me to send that out with you know in communication with or in collaboration with the communications committee or the executive committee, what have you, or if you think that we should be sending this out delegate to select board, um, I'll draft it and then you you can just adjust it as you like. Anybody else have so thoughts? I, yeah, um, I had a, a thought. I tend to, well, okay, first, so I just wanted to offer that um, while you're off camera, Jeremy, um, people can either chat me or I'll, I'll monitor the chat and I can call on people if that would help. Yeah, that would uh, be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then the other, uh, the other thing that I wanted to say is I tend to agree with Ray that um, something from the chair and, you know, again, being upfront about how we're going to spend the money. And one thing that we should look into is, you know, say we get, you know, $100,000 from Cabot, does that money need to go specifically to Cabot or is this more of a CUD wide build? And, you know, if it doesn't, and it might be a harder sell to get money from, say, Montpelier, you know, if we're not going to be spending the money in Montpelier. I don't know how that works, but we need to be, I think we need to be really upfront about that and anticipate that question. Michael? Um, I agree with that point, and, and that's what Jerry was saying in, in the chat. Um, I'm pretty sure that Callus money goes to Callus and Plainfield money goes to Plainfield and so forth. And um, we do have a time limit. This is just like the CARES Act, except it's better because it's three years instead of one. But we have to make sure that it gets, that if we're offering something, we can deliver on it within the time or the money gets lost. The town will lose that money. Um, so we may want to carefully look at our long-term plans and figure out which towns we actually want to reach out to because we may not be able to deliver to all 20 of them within the three years. That's the other comment I had. Okay, Ken, I see you mentioned something in chat. Yeah, I, I want to build on what David said because I, I, I think that maybe it's just my, my, the way I approach decision-making when I was a municipal official, 
I, I don't want to see the letter that says generally please support us. I want to see a very specific project, which means that um, each of these towns is going to, I think, is going to have to get a very specific proposal. And I realize that's not easy. Maybe, maybe in the, at the outset to say we will be working with, um, we, we, are, we are working to provide fiber service to your town and we will be developing a very specific proposal. But I, I, I don't, yeah, that's just where I am is I would much rather that we communicate very specifically and it is related also to when the money is spent and that it's spent within the boundaries of that town. Um, I, I, I just have trouble with the, the general letter to say, please support CB Fiber. So and, and I, one, one what last I, thing, oh. and one last thing, I, in, in terms of Montpelier, I, I have a hard time imagining <laughs> what CV Fiber is going to do for Montpelier. And so what the letter would look like is hard to imagine at this point. Right. So my my idea as I was as I was starting to write this <clears throat> is would be a an offer essentially to co contract with each town. So if let's say Cabot decides that Cabot wants to um, you know invest fifty thousand dollars of these these funds with us, then we can talk to them about what that looks like. But if we don't get you know if the rest of the towns don't want to play then we would not then try to negotiate it but you know Mon yeah montpelier is going to spend the money on the water and sewer you know infrastructure probably or whatever that's that's their that's their thing but yeah we're probably not going to be building fiber in montpelier it just doesn't really make make sense but if one of these other towns essentially wants to contract with us to do that i think that's just what we can put on the table does that seem more reasonable ken we can make that make there a part two yeah, I just, to be honest if i were on city council or if i were in a select board I, i'm not sure that i'm not sure it would i mean because he has no sense of scale um i mean maybe maybe yeah, maybe to be maybe it is to open the door and say okay let's sit down and work on it but the bottom line is we're going to have to work on it to understand very specifically what it is we can do um, and what it costs. It'd be so hard if I was on the Cabot um, Select Board to say, okay, I'm gonna put 150,000 towards fiber because I wouldn't have the faintest idea what $150,000 would do. So I see David and then uh, Jerry uh, said that he wanted to speak in chat. So of course I've thought about this. There are two things that towns have to purchase. A residence in towns have to purchase. They have to buy the inside the house equipment. So there we go. We can subsidize them. The other one is every town is probably going to need a, some sort of a hub unit. Have a and so we we pitched the two simple concrete things that a town can buy. Sorry, we can hear you, Jeremy. Yeah. We lost Jeremy again. Have we lost Jeremy? Yeah. No, my, my, my connection is well. garbage. Yeah, sorry, Jeremy. I know the feeling. Um, so, David, could, could you restate that? Because Jeremy sure. uh, yeah. kind of kept breaking in and yeah, exactly. so the two ideas that I've thought, you know, thought about in terms of communicating, you know, with the town of Callis would be, you know, we got 900 residents, and if, you know, if the city, the town wanted to help people purchase, you know, defray the cost of people signing up by buying the equipment that goes inside the house, that would be one item on a per unit basis. And the other one would be to uh, each town is probably going to need some kind of hub to connect everybody, or that's what I, my understanding is. I'm not an expert on this, but that costs a chunk of money. Um, so actually putting a, a, you know, a specific capital item into the request might work. I don't know the dollar amounts for those items, or does it include installation, or what, you know, how we want to frame it, but that would actually put some concrete um, that would thought actually... behind the, the request. So, David, um, Jeremy asked in chat if you could take over chairing the meeting. And okay. I think Jerry has been waiting to speak as well. Okay, Jerry. 
Yeah, thank you. So I, I'd like to do a, a hybrid between Ken and, and David because I think, I think we're heading in the right direction here. We need to be really focused. There's no point in going to the Berlin Select Board because we're not talking about laying fiber in Berlin until, you know, after I retire. So what, <laughs> what, what we need to do is figure out exactly where we're going first and talk to those towns and then have a very specific proposal that, you know, we can totally, you know, use this money to subsidize the, uh, the drops or whatever the specific thing is. But I think it needs to be extremely targeted, one or two towns that we know we can, we can promise because we have to deliver on this. And I know it's a lot of money. It's $10 million. It sounds like a lot. You know, the $10 is not for us. If we, can, if we can get a tenth of this, if we can get a twentieth of this, that would be fantastic. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't the big money that we're, we're chasing and it needs to be very targeted. That's it. Anyone else want to speak? Michael has his hand up. Are you gonna take over calling on people? Yeah, Michael, sorry, I turned myself off. Michael. Okay. Okay. Um, so we haven't um, quite got to the point where we've decided how we're dividing up the duties and the ownership of things between the CUD and the provider or providers that we um, work with. And it's quite typical, but not necessary, that the providers are the ones that deal with the equipment, deal with the hub and deal with the equipment in the homes. Um, so I just wanted to toss that out. We, we need to get working on those models and determining how we're going to partner um, before we make the pitch to the towns. So Tom had a comment in chat. Do you want to read that, Tom? Tom? Coming. Okay. Um, so I strongly back David's idea. I think defraying the costs for our residents would be fantastic. And uh, that uh, to Michael's earlier point, there's that three year limit, which could potentially be an issue. Um, but what if we were to make an agreement with the towns that if we can use the money now in other locations so that it can get be within that three year limit, then we would defray the cost on those towns, residents getting signed up when the time mm -hmm. comes that they can sign up. Anybody else? I just want to say that Tom's idea is, is excellent. So Jerry, have you gotten any of that, Jeremy? Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm still hearing it. It's uh uh just not not able to speak reliably. So my my question is, do I need to draft this letter then? Or yes. are we going to put yes. this, or are we going to put this behind several other decisions that we still have to make? Yeah, I mean, I'm just being frank here. Jeremy. How much time do you think we have? Sorry, Jeremy, and Matt. Um, I guess the question is, is Tom's idea allowable under the rules? I mean, I, I think it's a great idea if we can do it, uh, but I don't know if that's allowable under the rules of the funding. Sure. I think we could frame it to, that way it would work, but who knows? We haven't seen the rules yet. Michael. <laughs> so, so I have an answer for Jeremy. I, I think a, um, a non Ken Jones letter is still okay. A, a general letter alerting the towns that they're as they know, they're getting a bunch of money and they can spend it on sewers, they can spend it on a lot of different things. Please keep in mind that CV Fiber would like to work something out with them to help the residents get more broadband and we will work with them to come up with a practical plan. And, and I, I know that it would be better to show up with a specific one, but we're not ready. So it doesn't hurt to say, hey, 
keep that in the back of your mind. Don't spend it all because we think we'll be able to come up with something for your citizens. And um, we'll get back to you within three weeks or whatever. Anybody else? Jeremy? Oh, I was just raising my thumb. That sounds like a great idea, Michael. But yeah, let's just move on getting on I, I still think we should probably tell tell them more about what the potential uses of the money could be. So David, um, could we get rid of the presentation mode because one is probably killing your news bandwidth um, and also Thank makes it harder to see people. <laughs> well, who wants to see anybody, right? <laughs> How are we going to raise our hands? <laughs> Okay, I can, I may be able to pick back up here now. If I, if I start dropping out, then David, just pick up okay. where I disappear. Um, all right, so we talked about the federal money. We talked about the some of the state funding that's coming down the pike. And I think David kind of summarized that in the um, PDC report back. And anything else that we should be talking about in terms of uh, state or federal funds coming down the pike? Do we want to have a discussion of like the reconnect or any of the other stuff that's that we may be looking at in the near term? The 400,000 that is supposed to be coming March. March was the last I heard. It was coming in March. There's supposed to be an application that we need to fill out so that we can get $400,000. We really, really, really need that $400,000 now. Yeah, and it's still looks like it's April now. Is is that what Rob said? Yep. It's I am sort of very frustrated with the Department of Public Service. Hmm. Okay. Um <clears throat> All right. Well, let's uh I don't know, just keep keep asking, I guess, right? And they'll yeah. move when they can move. Yep. Um, let's see, moving on. The GMP and uh, Vermont Electric Company, or uh, Vermont Electric Co-op make ready subsidies. I think David, you already talked about that as well. Um, uh, let's do the RPC contract and then we can get to the poll inventory. So the RPC sent us a draft contract that uh, we went through, the committee went through and made changes, and then Bonnie has sent it back to us with um, all the stuff that we put into it. There's one missing piece that Jeremy needs to probably attach to it, which is whatever the COVID grant money conditions we got last year should probably be part of the contract because some of that money is probably paying for the RPC. So that was the reason she asked for that. But other than that, I'd like to make a motion that the uh, that we sign the contract and move on. And we are, I think there's a separate topic about the process for working with the RPC that's been drafted that I will not lead, but um, we think we're pretty close to, you know, the administrative stuff being handled you know, like we voted. Um, Jeremy and Matt doing all the administrative stuff and the planning and development committee doing the planning process stuff with the commission. Can I pause you for a second, David, so you can get a second and we can continue? Second. Great. Okay, yeah. Siobhan, our reliable second from Orange. Do you need, you need to um, define that a little better, the, the actual motion? The motion okay, is to yeah. sign the contract motion with sign the contract. The, the... Okay. Yes. So um, my, my question for you, David, is which um, which funding bucket, which grant are you talking about? Because I, I have both, I have the one we got today and we got the one from last year that funded, for example, our PM last year. Yeah, that would be, isn't that the same one? It's the same extension. It's not. It's not. There's, no, there's. So it, would so, have been, it would have been the one with the PM, okay. whatever the conditions were on that. The, the one that we signed today was for the two smallish projects and the outreach stuff that we were doing. Because what well, what I signed today yeah. was an amend was an amendment to the second grant that we got. The first grant that we got ended up being a hundred and sixty. Yeah, no, so it's 000. a second grant. It would be the, whatever's in the second grant, Jeremy. 
Okay, so this is outreach then? Yes, yeah. we, we, okay. All right, so we can, uh, we will put that in there and uh, go from there. Any other discussion? Yeah, just a question, Jeremy. The the seventy thousand dollars was the last thing we got from the uh, public service department. That that was the last tranche, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, did, did that money have the same restrictions on it, or any restrictions on it? Okay. All of the money that we get from the public service department has restrictions on it and are supposed to be used for very specific things that are laid out in the grant agreements. So we do not have a uh, carte blanche ability to just spend this on whatever we choose. We have to be able to track it back and explain what, uh, what we drew from which bucket and be able to essentially report back on that. I, I don't remember the, the, the report, the reporting requirements, but it. Um, well, let me ask a, 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 a pinpoint that question then. So the contract that we're looking to approve, would that fall into the requirements of that last $70,000 that we got from the public service department? I expected it would. Okay. Then, then, then we're free and clear. All right. Any, anything else on our contract with the RPC? Okay. Uh, okay. So hearing no more commentary, um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed abstentions or roll call requests? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, everybody. So let's go on then to the poll inventory work where we will be discussing uh, contracting or potentially contracting with one or more entities for doing that poll inventory. Let me get to my executive session language. <clears throat> um, so <laughs> I move that we, okay, so before I make this motion, um, actually, you know, I'm gonna make the motion then that I wanna have this discussion. Um, and Alan, if, if if I can give you a moment to uh, say what you said in the email about going into executive sessions, I think that would be helpful. Or Tom, you have something before we start? I'm just noting Ray is still out because he's at his select board meeting. If we go into executive session, will he be able to get in? Uh, he won't be back in time before we're done. He 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 handed us the his motion and such uh, via okay. email. But thanks for calling that out. Okay, so I'm going to move that we find that uh, premature general public knowledge of our contract negotiations would clearly place CV Fiber at a substantial disadvantage. Second. Okay, seconded by Siobhan. Any um, discussion? Jeremy? Uh, no, not, not on this. Sorry. But after, after. yes. Okay. So I, I, I think this is a reasonable time um, for us to talk about why we go into executive session and the importance of using this very sparingly. So in this case, because it's a contract negotiation, we wouldn't necessarily want the contractors to be able to um, use this to get unfair advantage against the other contractors. Um, when we've discussed proprietary things in the past that we've declared to be trade secrets, these are things that we do because it would be putting us, CV Fiber, the municipality, at a disadvantage on a competitive level because in some ways we are a competitive entity as well as being a public entity. So there, there's been some commentary um, in the news lately about CUDs and, and CUDs not, not being maybe as, as careful or as clear about why executive session is important. Um, Alan, did you want to add anything? Yeah, one one thing that happens all the time, and I, I think it's actually happening now, is um, we all tend to conflate records issues and meeting issues into the same bucket. And for us right now, we don't really have to get into 
a discussion that the disadvantage were being uh, we could be subjected to is because of certain plans we developed for the build out of our routes. You know, that's an exemption nine public records uh, kind of question. All we have to do now, if we want to go into an executive session, is to be able to say that we 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 have uh, we have found that um, premature general public knowledge about this, our discussion of awarding contracts for uh, the bill out of our system or pieces of the bill out of our system or, or whatever we want to say would clearly place CV fiber at a substantial disadvantage. So we we just have to say that we've you know we've we've had a finding by that which which we're kind of doing now um, and we have to mention that it does deal with contracts because you have to be able to reference one of the specific exempt categories potentially exempt categories that's laid out in the public records law does that make sense yeah it, it, it does and, and you're right i should have mentioned that um this this would be contracts under one vsa section 313 a1a right that would be good if i can I, what i heard jeremy phrase and it made sense is there is a difference between us having a discussion about potentially letting out a contract where the different contractors, if they were to hear the discussion, would put them at a different disadvantage. That is different than us talking about our roots or something that puts the future of CV Fibers business at disadvantage. To me, they're different. And in this case, I thought we were doing it because we're going to be discussing contractual issues that competitors, not to CV Fiber, but competitors to the um, proposals Correct. would gain from. And so is there a difference? Well, I mean, I, I think that by letting the contractors in, so imagine all the contractors got to join us for this private discussion about the contracts. They may not, they may be able to use that to take advantage of us as a public entity. So I think yeah, it's probably both. Yeah, yeah Kent. Ken, Ken, Ken's question is an interesting one, but I think that's why all you really have to do is to find that discussion that we might have about awarding contracts in a certain area of our build-out plans uh, puts us at a substantial disadvantage. So you don't really have to go into the detail of what exactly it is you're going to be going to be looking at the specific the very specific bits of information that might give us harm. It's the fact that we want to enter into contracts and discuss with whom we want to make the contracts that triggers our ability to have an, an executive session. Jeremy? I mean, frankly, when you think about it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here saying, I, I don't know what we're going to be talking about. So how can I, how can I reasonably make a determination that, 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 that we shouldn't be talking about this in a public session? And I think that's actually the reason why it simply says if you're going to be discussing contracts, you can go into executive session as long as you can say credibly that it could place you at a substantially disadvantage if the public knew about it um, ahead of at, ahead of when you would like them to know about it. You have reasons why the con the contract information or discussion about the contract should not be made public at this point. And I think. I think we do. I, you know, that's sort of in the nature of contracts, frankly. So, okay. hold on. Jer Jeremy was was imminent, and then Jeremy, then David. Sorry, David. Um, so, real quick, Alan, just to make clear, though, it, it sounded like you were saying that these were that that it could be more general, but I thought that we need to see specifically the purpose for which we are going into executive session, and then while in executive session. In session discuss nothing but that topic correct right right so okay. we're, we're we're going into executive session to discuss uh con contracts potential contracts and that's all we're going to talk about we can't talk about anything else okay david then tom okay so let me let's put this con into context so the background and this is we we the polls review polls Inventory Proposal Review Committee of David, Jeremy, Tom, and Ray reviewed 16 proposals that were submitted. 
That list was whittled down to nine, then five, now three. The subcommittee reviewed their costs, methodology, schedules, as well as the responses to questions it had submitted to five contractors. The subcommittee recommended to the Planning and Development Committee that CV Fiber enter into an IDIQ master services agreement with the three firms by the name of Apex, Eustis, and Tilson. So the, what I don't understand, Alan, is anything in we're that. Supposed, David, we're in executive we're session, supposed. so I can say anything I want. But we're, the question no, for me we're not is, in we're, we're not, not yet. We're not in it. We are not in executive session yet, David. Oh, God. <laughs> See, that's it. There we go. I have question and answer. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's David. I think it's why all it says is if you're going to talk about contracts, you can go into executive session. Let's do it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. All the, all those in favor Perfect. of just just doing it, please signify by saying aye. Oh, aye. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm aye. Sorry. Aye. Tom, yeah, Tom, Tom you had your hand up. You're, You're muted, Tom. Tom. Sorry. Um, so uh, just to Ken's point, I mean, the uh, the type of contract we want to go into, we have not yet received final value marks that are, you know, offers. We have rough estimates. And in the future, we will be getting bids from the three award winners. And so there is the potential for them to change what they're going to offer based on anything we might say publicly. Correct. OK. So. We are not going to executive session yet. I want to make that abundantly clear. We are right now only finding that if we were to do that, if we were to do that, that we would be at a, you know, that we're doing this so that we're not at a disadvantage. Okay. All those in favor of making that finding, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Opposed abstentions or roll call requests. Wonderful. So we have found this. Part two. <laughs> Part two is I move that we go into executive session to discuss the contracts related to the poll inventory contractors. Second. Second. I have a, okay, seconded by Siobhan. Is there any further discussion? Jeremy. Um, so a question about this. Uh, does Zach stay in or how does that work? Okay, there are there's no minutes to be taken inside an executive session, and we will not likely have much to record after that. If you wanted to record roundtable stuff after that, but I think we can safely let Zach off the hook for the evening, which is again why we try to put this towards the end. Okay, Alan, did Zach, you have to I'll add? send you the time that we exit uh, executive session, and then the time that we close the meeting. And if there's anything else, we'll take notes on that. So I guess uh, thank you very much, and uh, have a good rest of your evening. Thank you all. Alan? So you can actually take minutes in an executive session, but what that means is anybody can ask for them and you have to turn them over. So it sort of goes against the idea of an executive session <laughs> if you say, let's take minutes. That's why most times you don't take minutes in executive sessions. Right, and I will stop the recording at this point and we will kick Orca off and such. <laughs> See you, Zach. How about now? We got you now. Okay. So, okay. Any further discussion? Orca's okay. Still All those here. Are, well, we're not in executive session yet. Oh, duh, because we haven't voted yet. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. No. Every, everybody's chomping at the bit to talk to talk about contracts. I know. I know. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions or roll call requests. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. So, uh, Orca, I am going to disconnect you, and uh, we will lock the meeting, stop recording, etc. So, going to dismiss Orca.